Yeah, as you can see, I'm a little winded. Um, that's a piece that requires a lot of air, and I have to tank up a lot before I play. Um, so what I'm doing in before these long phrases, because it's written for flute, and you know, obviously horn and flute um, require different things, I'm breathing a lot. So I'm, I'm taking a few breaths in before I play, and then I can have a little bit more oxygen um, to hopefully last me a few phrases until I can take a quick another sip of breath. Um, so the next piece I'm going to play is um, completely different. This is by Olivier Messiaen, and Messiaen was a French composer who lived, um, who was born in 1908 and died in 1992. He's the direct descendant of some of the French composers such as Ravel, uh, Debussy, um, many of those uh, Foray, um, and that school of color and of sound and just kind of um, all those different nuances he was able to put into his music in a more modern setting. So Messiaen had a, um, I don't want to say a disease, but it was kind of a specific, a specific um, attribute where he'd hear sound and see a color. It's called synesthesia. Okay, uh, I'm probably gonna, it's a hard one to say, synesthesia. Okay, so um, what happens, there's another composer who had that as well, uh, that was um, Paul Dick Stas, uh, Scriabin. Scriabin is probably the most famous uh, composer who had synesthesia. And um, again, so uh, when you hear a sound, you see a color. It's kind of um, kind of a cool thing. But Messiaen wrote for many uh, different colors and different effects. This piece was inspired by um, the death of his friend, but also two biblical verses. Uh, it was Psalm 147 verses 3 and 4, and then also um, Job 16, and uh, I believe it's chapter um, 18 or 19, uh, 17, excuse me. So what um, Messiaen was explaining with these, uh, um, it's basically the cry of man in this horn call. The horn fits the range of the human voice, and Imagine that there's this lonely person who's crying out and the more they cry out the less they hear a return and it's just this mourning of the soul and There's even a part in this piece where Messian writes for natural horn for the hunting horn the horn without valves So it's just a bugle you'll see me grab onto the ring of my bell so I can get more of a natural horn sound I won't have my hand in the bell like I usually do and you'll hear a different sound. It sounds more brash, a little bit more um, like hunting horn, like a little bit more like a bugle. And you'll hear it's a call until it's like persistent, persistent, persistent until the caller goes hoarse. And there are other sections that require extended technique in this piece, such as um, uh, when you play half valves. So if I put my valves down, <laughs> You see, I'm opening up these ports, but if I put my valve halfway down, so it gives it that kind of muted effect. And Messian himself called it um, the sound of a dog uh, whining or whimpering or whale calls. And um, this piece um, is the sixth movement of a uh, 12 movement piece that Messiaen wrote for the Bicentennial of America. He went to the canyon lands of Utah and um, observed nature. And this movement in particular um, is part of this piece. It's the sixth movement. And the total piece is called um, Le Canyons uh, aux Etoiles. Uh, aux Canyons uh, Etoiles, excuse me. And um, this um, basically encapsulates the um, strife of the human condition, the mourning, the pain, but also the beauty of nature and the beauty of a possible afterlife. So this is um, really appropriate for this time for me, and I just really hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, it's just... Um, a really powerful piece. It might not always be beautiful, but then again, there's 
um, in the dissonance there's beauty. Hope you enjoy it. This is Messian's Appel Interstellar.
Thank you very much. That's a lot of fun to play. Um, yeah, it's just fun for me to get to play new music. And it's fun for me to have something to practice towards. Um, I, wanted, uh, I wanted to treat this a little bit like an interview of myself and also tell you a little bit about why I love to do recitals and why I love preparing um, by memory. So, the recital format is much more intimate than um, an orchestral situation. In an orchestral setting, I'm probably 100 feet from our closest uh, patron and from our closest uh, you know, audience member. And depending if they have the coral terrace open or not, then I'm maybe closer to 20 feet away from our clo closest um, audience member. But for me, doing a recital is much more intimate. I get to interact with the audience and tell stories about my life and about the music and about the horn and what it's meant for me. And also, I get a chance to play new music, which is always fun for myself. Um, this piece, Appel Interstellar, is a new piece for me as well. During this corona break, um, I ended up uh, teaching a lot of free masterclasses online 
as a way for me to give back to the um, music students who might not have lessons or might not have access to ensembles. And one of the students brought in Appel Interstellar to me, and I'd never seen it before. And of course, if I'm going to teach a piece, I need to look at it and really, you know, get to know it. And then I, um, you know, really got uh, in depth with the piece. Uh, she sent me the music, and I really, um, I started really learning it. And for me, it was just wow. This is so fitting for the time, but it's also so much fun to play. And I just worked it up, and then I wanted to learn the piece a little bit better than just by looking at the notes. When I'm looking at the page, it seems like it's more a visual exercise. It's for me trying to recreate what someone else has written on the page and trying to do that perfectly. And when I get off the music, when I start to memorize things, then it becomes all about um, how do I take what this person has written and feel these feelings, really understand the, uh, the harmonic structure, the tones, and really get inside those thoughts and those feelings and be able to deliver them myself. So when I'm playing a recital by memory, it's a much more intimate experience for me because I feel as if I'm an actor and I feel like I'm giving you uh, my own interpretation of this piece that's been uh, written. So some of these pieces are 300 years old, some of these pieces are um, just over 40 years old, but um, the feelings are still the same. And that's why classical music is so important um, to me and to, to our audience, is because it's some of the greatest music ever written and it's survived the test of time, meaning it's hundreds of years old and we still perform it um, you know, week in, week out. But every time we perform it, we do a different version of it because we're different. The orchestra playing, the conductor's different, the audience might be different, maybe the hall or the situation in the, the country is different. So these all affect the performance and every time we have 100 people on stage, there's no two concert that's gonna be um, the same. So um, I love to play music by memory and it's a real fun process for my brain to try to map it out and try to map out what is uh, the composer saying and what are they, you know, what's their intentions. So the next piece that I'm going to play was not written for horn and it's one of those pieces that I've come back to time and time again. In September of 2001, uh, a great tragedy happened to America and um, I was 17 years old and I remember where I was, I was in high school, and um, I was, you know, I hadn't even got accepted in music schools, right? And um, I remember I was practicing the Bach cello suites, and those became kind of like um, just a piece of solace for me. And it's a piece that I come back to over and over again. No matter what's going on in my life, I know that I can always go back to Bach, and it really um, aligns all my molecules, and it just kind of helps me get grounded. And it's just beautiful music that I can lose myself in every time. I'll never forget when um, September 11th happened. Um, I was playing this Bach cello suite, and there was this corridor where I used to go, uh, and it was, uh, you know, exit to one of the, the um, parking lots. But everyone was inside in their classrooms and watching the, the newsreel, and I went and I played my horn. And just being alone in this very reverberant, reverberant space where I could really hear beautiful sounds and hear Bach, that was my comfort. So I wanted to share um, Bach's first cello suite with you um, as something that comforts me, sharing that with you. And um, again, these weren't written for horn, but I feel they work so well. This is my first time performing this in public. So uh, it's, I've done specific movements here or there, but I've never done the whole suite in its entirety in public. And this was a really fun challenge for me to practice and to get ready and to learn by memory. So thank you all for joining me today, and I look forward to sharing Box Cello Suite number one.
so much that's so much fun for me to do and it's really fun for me to get a chance to play this music and for me to uh, you know really just be a part of your life today happy Mother's Day first of all to all the mothers and happy Mother's Day um, to um, everybody really so I uh, sorry I think I walked a little close to camera um, I think we're better now I want to end this um, recital series with a piece that you know is just really dear to my heart and this piece is um, pretty much one of those pieces that's been with me almost my whole life uh, I grew up listening to more classical music and um, we had one tape of pop music and it was uh, the Beatles and it was arranged by my or, you know put together by my cousin we used to have to make mixtapes and you know that was days before playlists, the days before you know burning CDs. Uh, you'd have to like compile all of these songs on a tape. So my cousin, uh, who's also a musician, uh, Brandon Gratheus, made this um, mixtape for my grandma, and my grandma put it on for me. And I remember you know there were Strawberry Fields, Forever, and there was Penny Lane, there were all these really amazing tunes. And as a kid, the lyrics, uh, my mind just went wild. I was like Strawberry Fields, Forever. Oh, I like strawberries. I like fields. You know, you know, you can just imagine those lyrics. Um, this lyric is, I'm sure you'll instantly know, but in this time of COVID, I know it's, it's hard to stay positive. It's hard to know what the future will bring. I know we've all um, known people who've lost uh, friends. We've all, you know, had experiences losing jobs or, um, you know, having to lose concerts in our case. Um, it's been really uncertain and it's it's scary uh, but we will get through this and this song for me shows you know it just gives a little bit of hope it's here comes the sun by John Lennon and by Paul McCartney
joining me. Happy Mother's Day. And again, please visit the Musicians Fund of Chicago or donate to your local uh, Musicians Fund. I know New York has one. I know Dallas has one. So uh, thank you again for joining me and happy Sunday. It's been a pleasure to share this afternoon with you. And thank you for listening. Have a wonderful day. Bye.